Hello, this is Dr. Anthony Delmond. We've been discussing the sales presentation. Our last section was on presentation methods. Now we want to move on and start talking about the components of the sales presentation. And we're going to start out with the presentation mix. Much like the marketing mix that we talked about when we were discussing what marketing has to do to get a product's information out there and so on, uh, the presentation mix is going to be the set of components that a salesperson needs to consider when she constructs her sales presentation. It's smaller scale, but equally important to the sales process. Uh, there's going to be four main parts we're going to talk about. Some books will talk about six, uh, but we've combined a few that seem to fit together. Uh, the ones we're going to talk about are persuasive communication, proof, visual aids, and participation. Persuasive communication is the use of communication tools to convince someone to take a specific position or action. Uh, all this means is that we're trying to persuade the buyer to buy. It consists of a lot of elements, and we'll talk about a few in this course. Uh, the salesperson's style, uh, their demeanor, the way that they behave, uh, narrative design using a storytelling structure to sell the product, suggestion and language. We've heard the term the power of suggestion. That's very important in sales. Uh, and then the argument structure. Let's start with the salesperson's style. Uh, the first thing you need to decide is whether or not you're going to behave in a formal or an informal style. A formal style is where you are uh, opting for larger words, no contractions, acting very professional, and not having very much of that uh, personal amicability. Um, Formal style is useful for uh, expert strategy or guru strategy uh, because it sets the salesperson apart from the buyer. Uh, it might not be as comfortable. It's certainly not for building uh, friendly relationships. You can have a friendly relationship with somebody you have a formal style presentation with, but it's not built for that. It's built for uh, making sure the customer knows that they can trust you, they have confidence in you, but you're not building a friendship. You're building a professional relationship. Informal style is where you are adopting a friendlier tone, uh, using earthbound tools of communication. Uh, you might have a lot of contractions, colloquialisms, uh, and sort of a folksy attitude. Uh, you don't have to have all of these, but you're not putting on airs. You're not seeming to be uh, separate. You are at the same level, on the level of the, of the buyer, uh, and so you can form that friendly relationship. Uh, I included something interesting here for just terms, uh, things you would word, words you would use uh, if you're using a formal versus an informal style. Uh, acceptable would be uh, formal, okay or fine would be informal, uh, and you can see a lot of these uh, terms that fit with each style. There's many, many more. This is an endless list, but this just gives you kind of a feel. A salesperson's demeanor can also play a major role. Everybody adopts some kind of demeanor in a sales situation. Uh, it's your outward manner. This is the way that your uh, attitude toward the customer is during the sales process. It can include your body language, your speaking style, your general affect. Uh, some people are very self-deprecating. They make jokes to uh, make it seem like they don't believe in themselves. Some people adopt that. Some people are jolly naturally. Uh, some people are reserved or cranky naturally. But it's really important for salespeople to uh, carefully build and monitor their demeanor uh, and adapt to the situation. You, if you were a naturally jolly person, great. Uh, if you can use that and present a happy front to your client, uh, present yourself as being a happy person, great. If you're naturally cranky or naturally quiet, you might want to adopt a different demeanor for your sales persona. Uh, so if you are uh, very introverted, very nervous talking to people uh, and don't enjoy that interaction, uh, you might need to to work really hard develop it, developing a demeanor that is more comfortable uh, for those types of interactions. I suppose what I'm trying to say here is that you don't have to just use your natural demeanor. A lot of salespeople will adopt something that is not their natural demeanor uh, for their sales career. Something else that's part of persuasive communication is narrative structure. Uh, storytelling can be very persuasive. Uh, if you're 
telling a good story, people are going to follow along. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research that's gone in shown that uh, people are much more engaged when you're telling a story. It's easy to walk through those AIDCA steps uh, if you can get somebody uh, engaged in the narrative. Uh, you can also have a good impact on uh, product marketing. So telling a story is very, very useful in the sales uh, world. For suggestion, uh, suggestion is where you're putting an idea into your customers' heads without them really realizing that you've done it. Uh, there's a couple different types of subtle suggestion. Uh, suggestive selling is where you're uh, arranging products or discussion to convince somebody to buy a product. It could be visual. Uh, you could put really uh, top-of-the-line products of yours up against some of the lower-end versions of uh, your competitors' products in an image for someone, and it makes your products look very nice, even though you're not showing a direct connection. Uh, or it could be verbal. You could uh, spend a lot of time talking about how great your products are or teaching people about certain aspects that they might not know about that would convince them to buy. Some examples of uh, suggestive selling. Uh, placing the highest quality products, like I said, uh, on the showroom floor would compel a buyer to spend more than they would initially would want to spend. Uh, you never go to a car dealership and find the worst models. You find the top-of-the-line models because people will find things about that that they like and maybe pay a little more than they would expect to have paid. Uh, upselling, uh, you know, for the, for the uh, hamburger uh, example here, uh, if you ask somebody if they'd like to supersize their thing, maybe they hadn't thought about that and they jump it up and you're able to sell them a little bit more. Uh, Cross-selling is when you attempt to sell a product that's related to the product they want to buy, uh, and you already had them ready to purchase something, you're just throwing something in on top of it. Uh, so somebody's planning to buy a burger, and you suggest, do they want fries? And then they buy it because it's something that goes with that burger. They've associated them together. There's a handful more types of suggestion, but we'll just talk about a couple more. Direct suggestion is when you're explicitly suggesting a path for your customer. Uh, you're telling them, hey, I I think maybe you want to buy this. I think maybe you want to try this. Um, it's very direct, but they might not realize that it's a selling technique. Uh, psychological suggestion is a, is, is a little more complex. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You might ask the customer to imagine uh, themselves using the product, so some sort of self-visualization. Uh, you could ask them to imagine somebody else using the product, uh, maybe somebody that they know and respect, uh, a professor, uh, a major person in uh, the news, somebody uh, that they respect in the public space. Uh, you can also appeal to the customer's sense of pride, prestige, or vanity. Uh, if you're talking about selling a uh, tractor, you might appeal to uh, what their neighbors might think. Uh, if you get a John Deere, that's quite clearly saying something about you, whereas if you get a Kubota that's saying something uh, about you also, or Case IH, everyone has some connotation. Uh, so you want to get what your neighbors are getting, maybe that's the highest end model. The last piece of persuasive communication we want to talk about is logical structure. Uh, logic reasoning involves the formation of rational arguments that when you take them together they lead the customer toward a conclusion that you want them to reach. So an example uh, you might have uh, a few premises, so th these three premises. Uh, your yard grows uh, a lot of grass. You have no lawnmower, and riding lawnmowers uh, cut lots of grass quickly. What's the conclusion you want them to come to? Well, obviously, if they have a lot of grass, they have no lawnmower, and riding lawnmowers are a way to fix that problem, they should buy a, light, a riding lawnmower. This is very clear. Uh, it's three steps to a prescribed conclusion. Um, another way to do it is with an if-then statement, uh, where you have an antecedent, the if part, and the consequent, which is the then part. Uh, if you buy a riding lawnmower, then you will be able to mow your lawn. Why did I word it that way, and not, uh, if you want to mow your lawn, then you could buy your, a riding lawnmower? Well, uh, that gives them a choice. In this construction, the salesperson assumes they've made the purchase, and then they get the reward, a mowed lawn. If you were to reward it the other way and ask them if they want to mow their lawn, 
they could come up with a bunch of other reasons, or a bunch of other ways to get their lawn mowed. So you're assuming it right up front that they're going to follow this path. Uh, if you worded it the other way, for example, if you want to mow your lawn, uh, you could buy a riding lawn mower, buy a push lawn mower, hire a lawn care service. Uh, if you don't want a lawn to mow, you could uh, even just switch out grass for uh, rocks or clover. So you don't want to give them a choice, so you construct it a certain way. Again, uh, persuasive communication, right? All right, I think that's a good place to stop, and we will come back and talk about uh, proof statements and visual aids in the next session.